Thomas Jefferson wrote, It is in our lives and not from our words that our religion must be read. In his own words, Jefferson claimed to be a Unitarian. The regional district for UU congregations in Virginia, T Tennessee, and the Carolinas, and parts of Georgia is named after Jefferson. But at times we have thought of removing his name from the district because his life, his life did not live up to his words. The man who wrote, all men are created equal, owned slaves. It's likely that he had children by Sally Hemings. She was his slave, and there was no way that that relationship could have been free and consensual. We are all faced with the dilemma that faced Jefferson. Probably none of us will create words as noble as the Declaration of Independence, nor are we likely to have the servants whipped to get more work from them. But all of us are less than our highest expectations. All of us live lives that are easily easier said than done. How many of us have deviated from our philosophy of parenting? Have we claimed to be hardworking and then taken an extra half hour for lunch? We want to be honest, but often state what we want to be as if it was a fact. We live in North Carolina. The motto on the great seal of the state reads in Latin, esse quam videre, to be rather than to seem. That is our challenge, to actually be what we say we are. We say we respect the inherent worth and dignity of every person, but I'm sure all of us have a list of people who make us uncomfortable. <laughs> we may hide our discomfort by sarcastic humor or debating anyone who questions us. We cherish the free and responsible search for truth and meaning, but get annoyed if someone takes us to see something we don't want to see. It's a good thing we are universalists because we are the first people in need of forgiveness. But even Jefferson, in his imperfect life, knew something important. What you do is more important than what you say. Or in the words that we just read from the book of James, faith without works is dead. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith by my works. George Marshall, in an essay entitled, Why I'm a Unitarian, wrote, For us, salvation is by character. It's a matter of deeds, not creeds. And the natural world is the center of our lives. UUs are officially without creed. Because creeds lead to hypocrisy, and UUs hate hypocrisy, and one way to avoid hypocrisy is never give a clear answer to what you say you believe. <laughs> but if you look at what we have done over the years, what we believe comes clear. When Jefferson wrote the Virginia Statute on Religious Freedom, that deed revealed his creed. He believed that there should be a wall of separation between church and state. When Universalist newsman Horace Greeley wrote editorials, his deed revealed his creed. He believed in the right to free expression. When Horace Mann advocated free public education, his deed revealed his creed. He believed children had the right to learn. When Susan B. Anthony tried to vote, her deed revealed her creed. She believed in the expansion of democracy. When Universalist Clara Barton founded the Red Cross, her deed revealed her creed. She believed that help and healing should be brought to all in need. 
When Dorothea Dix built mental hospitals, her deeds revealed her creed. She believed troubled people need treatment and not punishment. When Mary White Ovington co-founded the NAACP, her deed revealed her creed. She believed that blacks and whites could work together to build a better America. When Roger Baldwin founded the American Civil Liberties Union, his deed revealed his creed. He believed that the U.S. Constitution should be protected and enforced. When Margaret Sanger formed Planned Parenthood, her deed revealed her creed. She believed that women had the right to control their own body. When Clarence Darrow defended Scopes in the famous monkey trial, his deed revealed his creed. He believed that science teachers should actually teach science and not superstition. When Nobel laureate for chemistry, Linus Pauling, organized other scientists to advocate a nuclear test ban treaty, he then won the Nobel Peace Prize. His deed revealed his creed. He believed science should be used to promote peace. When James Reeb marched in Selma, he died for the sake of a deed that revealed his creed. He believed that racism must be resisted. When UU publisher Beacon Press put out the Pentagon Papers, their deed revealed their creed. They believed that Americans had the right to know the truth about why they were at war. When Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web, it was before he became a Unitarian Universalist, but he notes that the interdependent web shares many of the same philosophies. Decentralization, tolerance, and the uncensored pursuit of truth. Berners Lee follows in the line of Unitarian Samuel Morse, who invented the telegraph, and Alexander Graham Bell, who invented the telephone. What is it about us always looking for a new way to express our opinion? <laughs> <laughs> there are many more famous UUs. Almost every website of every UU congregation has a list or a link of famous Unitarian Universalists. Because it is easier to say what we have done than to list what we believe. But I look at this congregation, a gathering of the faithful, a fellowship of believers. For I have seen what you have done. I see healers of the sick, educators. When I came to town and sought out interracial friendships through Crossing 52, I found many of my members there. As a new group, communities helping all neighborhoods gain empowerment was being formed, I saw you there and ready to make a change. As the gay, lesbian, straight education network strives to protect our children, you are there. Even our teens have joined in this cause for social justice. I know others of you who work for Habitat Tap for Humanity, others with crisis control. Over 150 people participated in last year's great day of service. The Social Action Committee of this congregation wants to help amplify the way you put your faith in action. That yeah, part of doing that is the little slip of paper that is in your order of service. We know, we know that you are doing many things in this community and that we want to reflect who we are and what issues that come from the people gathered here as we create a voice in our community. So I ask you to fill out those pieces of paper, and they will be collected after the service. I think there's a table that might even have donuts. So you can redeem your social, your, your, your social action with a donut. It's, it's, it's a very Winston-Salem type of thing to do. <laughs> and also, last year, our congregation opened our space to the Triad Buyers Club. And they are a food co-op that brings organic food at reasonable prices to this community 
the greater Winston-Salem community. And part of that agreement was that they were willing to bring coffee to the UU congregations, that they have some that we use in uh, making our coffee called Organic Fellowship Blend. <laughs> I think these free marketers are marketing to Unitarian Universalists. But that is a good metaphor for who we are. Over 400 UU congregations use and buy organic uh, free trade coffee. Because we are an organic religion. With our roots in Thoreau and Emerson, we are close to nature. And we avoid toxic killers such as shame and damnation to give people a chance to grow in their own way. As a fellowship, we emphasize building a better community within these walls and beyond these walls. We want to create a blend of many people embracing the best qualities of everyone. So you can buy coffee in the lobby after the service. I sometimes sneak in my uh, announcements into my sermon. <laughs> the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Winston-Salem is an inclusive, supportive community of spiritual freedom evolving wisdom, and ethical action. Our mission statement gives us a lot to live up to. The first element of that is building community. To be an organic fellowship blend, we need to be inclusive and supportive. To be inclusive, we need to reach out to each other and be open to change. For every relationship is about giving and receiving. We need to be supportive of each other's dreams. That is not to say that we're going to always agree with each other. We wouldn't be Unitarian Universalists if we did that. But there are ways to disagree that are more helpful. Are you crazy is not a supportive phrase. <laughs> Are you sure you're a UU is not inclusive. <laughs> Clarifying questions help you understand what the other person is saying and may help them better understand themselves. Asking if you have considered the alternative or what pleases you most about your opinion or what doubts did you have to overcome to reach that decision. Now those are questions that cause people to think and do not attack them as people. And also, we must remember to talk about our own perspective as it is, as our perspective, not the ultimate dogmatic truth. Remember the humanity of everyone we speak to. This is what fosters the spiritual freedom and evolving wisdom. How we practice our religion is more important than what we believe. Whatever we believe, we must believe it with compassion. We stand in the history of great UUs whose beliefs were apparent in their action. And that is why the end of our mission statement is ethical action. One could say that ethical action is both the means and the ends to our religion. We do not have a ceremony that absolves you of your sins. We do not have a magic way of erasing your mistakes. Life is not an etch-a-sketch that you can shake clean. <laughs> we promote acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth. This is not a Friday, a Saturday, or a Sunday religion. It is a religion that is lived every minute of every day. If you want to know what you believe, look 
at what you do. How do you earn your living? How do you treat your family? How do you treat your pets? What clothes do you wear? What food do you eat? How much do you consume? How much do we exercise? What do we drive? What do we watch on TV? What we do reveals who we are and what we believe. We need to find a way seven days a week to remind us of who we are and how we want to live. One example of this was a famous man who died this week. Now, he was not a Unitarian Universalist, but he was an imperfect man, and he'd be the first one to tell you that. But he found a way to remind himself about what was important in his life. It was Johnny Cash. He wore black to remind himself how much work needed to be done in the world. And I want to read to you now from his song, Man in Black, because it has some good Unitarian Universalist themes in it. <clears throat> well, you wonder why I always dress in black and why you never see bright colors on my back and why does my appearance seem to have a somber tone well, there's a reason for the things that I have on. I wear the black for the poor and the beaten down, living in the hopeless, hungry side of town. I wear it for the prisoner who has long paid for his crime, but is there because he's a victim of the times. I wear the black for those who have never read or listened to the words that Jesus said about the road to happiness through love and charity. Well, you'd think he's talking straight to you and me. Well, we're doing mighty fine, I suppose, in our streak of lightning cars and fancy clothes, but just so we're reminded of the ones who are held back. Up front, there ought to be a man in black. I wear it for the sick and the lonely old, for the reckless ones whose bad trip left them cold. I wear the black in the morning for the lives that could have been. Each week we lose a hundred fine young men. And I wear it for the thousands who have died, believing that the Lord was on their side. And I wear it for another hundred thousand who have died, believing that we all were on their side. Where there's things that I will never be right, I know. And things need changing everywhere you go. But till we start to move and make things right, you'll never see me wear a suit of white. Oh, I'd love to wear a rainbow every day and tell the world that everything's okay. But I'll try to carry off a little darkness on my back. Till things are brighter, I'm the man in black. What do we do? and remind ourselves that the world needs us. We all need to make a choice about what we have in our lives that reminds us of who we are and what we want to be. I think of a contrary image to Johnny Cash's Man in Black, the poem, When I am an old woman, I will wear purple. And that boldness of saying, I am going to be out there in public. And I know that there are people in this congregation who wear a rainbow every day to just let the world know that there is more than one way to love in this world. What do we do to remind us of who we are? What actions do we take that let us live our faith. Almost anywhere we work, look, we will see that work needs to be done. Let us look inside and find the strength to do it. I open the floor to you to listen to what your faith makes you do. children. 
breakfast duty every morning. And I must say, every morning, he just grabs the children as they come out, and he hugs them, and he squeezes them. He always thinks to find the one that he needs the most. He walks down the hall with the kids like this, grabbing on him like, like little barnacles. And he calls them, he says to you, look at that one, he's my son. And I grab someone else, she's my daughter, oh, she's my son. And I just love, love that. He's brought me back and I find myself doing the same thing. Just grabbing them and hugging them and kissing them and wishing them a good day. And he's brought so much sunshine and light into, into our school.
back of the song where you can remain seated, seated as you're going to be joining up on the chorus. A song by Chris Williamson, a lovely folk singer, uh, called Song of the Soul. <laughs> <coughs> That's okay, we'll figure it out. 